Hey guys, Matt here with Juice Joyrides, and today we're going to be doing a BAC 4000 controller review, or the Back 4000 controller, however you say it. You know, it's the controller upgrade for the Surron X to give you more power. In this review, I'm going to tell you about how long I've had it, some of the problems I've had with it, some of the pros and cons, and maybe some of the things I'd do differently if I could do it over. So for starters, I bought my Surron X stock on March 1st, and by April 1st, I had the BAC4000 controller in my possession and installing it. So basically within about three weeks, I decided I was ready for more power and I ordered the BAC4000 controller from Emoto Bros. The reason I decided to get my BAC4000 from Emoto Bros is because they included the Egg Rider display for free when you bought the kit. Also at the time, the controller was a little bit limited and they were out of stock and they just had a controller drop. So it kind of gave me a little bit of scarcity and I decided I needed to buy it because I got them in stock. After shipping, I paid $987 for the controller and the egg rider, the bypass kit, and I also fell for a upsell. I got the aluminum cover, which was like a drop shipped separate thing that cost like an extra 50 bucks. And I kind of regret buying that because I never even installed it. The other big name selling the BAC4000 controller for the Surron is Greenline Engineering and I kind of do regret not buying my controller from them and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. So the first thing I want to touch on with the BAC4000 controller is the installation process. Now there's really two parts to this installation process. The first is to install the controller and the Egg Rider display. The Egg Rider display will replace your stock display so you will no longer have the Sport and eco mode. Also with my setup, I cannot use the horn anymore because there's no button for the horn. And the second is if you actually really want to utilize the power of the BAC4000 controller on the Surron is you really need to bypass your stock battery if you're not gonna upgrade your battery. If you do not do the battery bypass, the performance increases are gonna be very minimal. I can tell you this firsthand because I actually test rode mine without doing the battery bypass and I was disappointed that it really didn't add much more power without the bypass. So there are in-depth videos showing you how to install the Back 4000 controller on your Surron. It is a very straightforward process, however, it is pretty intrusive. You really gotta get in there and really take your bike apart. So if you're not really like a hands-on person, you might have a little bit of difficulty doing this. Now I am a pretty novice, kind of hands-on, working on bikes kind of person, and I was able to do the install in like a about an hour or two, but it is quite a bit more intrusive than like installing new handlebars or putting on a seat riser or something like that. If you have a little bit of patience and you can follow the instructions, you'll probably be just fine. Personally, I had never used shrink wrap before, so using like the lighter and putting the shrink wrap on, that was a whole new experience for me, but it was pretty cool and I'm glad I did it. So the second part of this installation is you really need to do the battery bypass because if you're not gonna upgrade your stock battery to a more powerful battery, there's some sort of like built-in circuit on the stock battery that prevents you from drawing more power. So even though the controller you just installed is saying, hey, you can pull 7,000 watts of power from the battery, there's a little circuit on the battery that says, hey, no, actually you cannot take more than 5,000 watts from me. Now the sketchy part about this is you need to open up the battery and work on live DC current. And I don't know if you know anything about DC current, but basically if you short out one of those wires while you're working on the stock battery, you're pretty much gonna cause a huge fire and you're not gonna be able to stop it. So pretty much what you gotta do is go around and remove all of these screws and open up this entire top and then you're working with a live battery. So I actually don't have any footage of me doing this installation process, but I was pretty nervous doing it. And I took the battery outside and far away from everything in case something went wrong. And I started some sort of fire that I wouldn't be able to contain. Fortunately, I was patient and everything worked out just fine. There was no fires. And I got the kit installed. And let me tell you, once I powered that thing up and felt the 7,000 watts of power versus the stock 5,000-ish watts of power, it really makes a night and day change for the Surron. It really livens this bike up and makes the front end come off the ground a lot easier. It makes it a lot more powerful and it adds a lot more speed. So you'll be able to accelerate faster and have a higher top speed. 
One of the questions I get a lot with the BAC 4000 on the Servan is how does this affect range? To answer this question, it basically doesn't really affect range unless you use that extra power. So if you're just like cruising around and using the power like you would on the stock controller, you're gonna get like the same range. However, if you are utilizing that extra power, obviously you're just drawing more power from your battery and that's gonna drain it faster. I do have quite a few range tests using this stock battery and the upgraded controller on my channel, so I'll link those in the description box below this video. So to talk about some of the problems I've had with the BAC4000 from eMoto Bros, ever since installing the BAC4000 controller, I really haven't had too many problems with it. It's been like 99% flawless. Everything about it has been great, except for a short period of time, and I don't know why this happened. I still never really figured out why it happened. It kind of just went away on its own. But what happened was I'd be riding the Saran around and then like after I let off the throttle and the throttle was completely disengaged, the battery was still like applying a little bit of power. I'm having a little bit of problem with the Saran. Um, I'm on the BAC 4000 controller, a stock battery, it is bypassed. Uh, but what happens here is when I turn it on, and turn on the egg rider, everything's fine. And then I give it a little bit of throttle, let off. It's not stuck in, I don't think, but it keeps applying a small amount of current. And that basically happens, you know, if I speed up a little bit, slow down, come to stop, it just keeps wanting to apply a small amount of current here, basically on trickle. And also I should mention, the regenerative braking doesn't really seem to be working. So one of these modes is, has a regenerative braking and the other doesn't, but the regenerative braking doesn't really seem to be working. Any thoughts? It was just like a very small amount of power applying when the throttle was completely released. So like if I was stopped at a stoplight, it would just be basically trying to like roll forward on me. And pretty much this was just like causing like the motor to kind of heat up from like, you know, holding it in place while it was trying to roll forward. And my solution to this would be to just basically turn off the key to not let the motor get too hot. And then when it was time to go, you know, I just flip the key back on and go. Now, oddly enough, I don't really know what happened with this problem, where it came from or why it went away. It basically was just happening for like probably a span of about a month and it was off and on. And I don't really know, like maybe it was a loose connection somewhere or something, but it kind of just went away. It hasn't done it in a long time now. Another very minimal thing that I've noticed about this controller is the bolts that it comes with. They have actually rusted over time. I do live by the ocean here, so the salt water probably adds to that effect. It's really not a problem, just something I kind of noticed. Dude, one of my complaints about this Egg Rider display is you just can't see it. Like my sunglasses literally like filter it out. I can't see anything. So I'm trying to use this as my speedometer, but it is a good display. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the reasons I kind of wish I got the Greenline Engineering controller is because they offer the free progressive regen brake lever. And from what I've been able to figure out so far, I don't know how to hook up a progressive regeneration brake throttle on the Emoto Bros BAC4000. So pretty much the way the Egg Rider works that comes with the BAC4000 from Emoto Bros is there's a little push button on the Egg Rider display that allows you to change modes. And the way that they recommend you set it up and the way I did it is one of them has regeneration on and one has brake regeneration off. This is the area you can set the regeneration ratio for when you press the button. So this is kind of my one complaint. You basically just get one percentage you set it on and it's not like the variable where you can use like the thumb throttle to adjust. So it's not like a progressive thing. It kind of works as like a push button brake and it's actually pretty effective. Recently, I've learned that uh, keeping the regeneration on while riding wheelies works really well because it kind of helps you from preventing to loop the bike and flip back. So it's been helping me with my wheelies progression. But the thing that I don't like is you don't really have any control over the regenerative braking with this controller. It's either on or off. And from talking with other riders of the Suron bike, other people seem to really like having that throttle to use for progressive regeneration brake. I just really like the idea of that and I wish that I had it on my bike. 
So if I could do it over, I'd probably go with the Greenline engineering kit just for that reason alone even though it costs a little bit extra money. Because from the Greenline engineering kit, they have like a harness and everything set up for you, so it's plug and play. Overall, I've been super happy with the BAC 4000 controller and it really livens up the bike like so much. However, after about five months of riding on this setup, you know, and some various other modifications like changing out the sprocket, the chain, and other little things, I am now ready to upgrade to a 72 volt battery, which as many of you know, I ordered and it will be here pretty soon. Of course, if you do wanna upgrade your Surron to a 72 volt system or something higher than 60 volts, you will need to change out the controller. And part of the reason I got this BAC 4000 a long time ago is because I knew the day would probably come that I was ready to upgrade to the 72 volt system. If you have a Surron and you're ready to upgrade your controller, check the links below this video. I have a link over to Greenline Engineering as well as Emoto Bros. You can check out current pricing and see which option you'd wanna roll with. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more Surron content, and also feel free to browse my channel for other Surron related videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time.